Many great baseball players have come and gone that created memories that will last for a very long time. Some of them have done so wearing the good old red, white, and blue uniforms of the Cleveland Indians. I'm talking, of course, about those such as Bob Fellow, Rocky Calavito, Larry Doby, Lou Boudreau, Jim Tomey, Omar Vizquel, and so on and so forth. Then there are those not too many realize or remember ever playing with the Indians, whether they made a huge impact or just had a cup of coffee, took a piss, and then left. Hello, I'm Joe Gattulo, and these are my top 10 MLB players you did not know played in Cleveland. Oh, this should be exciting. And before I begin, this list is strictly former players that played with the Cleveland teams. So managers, general managers, ball boys, etc. do not count. Sorry, Bob Uecker. Number 10, Joe Carter. Many Tribe fans remember this power-hitting slugger, but the average fan may not. Carter played 16 years beginning with the Chicago Cubs in 1984 and ending in 1998 with both the Baltimore Orioles and San Francisco Giants. Carter is a five-time All-Star, all with the Toronto Blue Jays. His most memorable moment came in Game 6 of the 1993 World Series. It's also one of the greatest moments in MLB history. The Blue Jays were trailing the Philadelphia Phillies 6-5 in the bottom of the ninth inning. With Ricky Henderson and Paul Molitor on base, Carter blasted a 2-2 count off Mitch Williams to capture the Blue Jays' second straight World Series crown. He is a legend in Toronto. Before the amazing Toronto years, Carter was a Cleveland Indian, playing with the Tribe from 1984 to 1989. In Cleveland, Carter hit 151 home runs and 530 RBIs, an average of 25.2 home runs and 88.3 RBIs per season. He even finished 9th place in the MVP voting in 1986. After the 89 season, Carter was traded to the San Diego Padres and one of the greatest moves in Indians history. In return, the Indians received Chris James, not related to LeBron, Carlos Baerga, and Sandy Alomar Jr. Carr was then traded from the Padres to the Blue Jays the following season. Thank you very much, Wales Vagina. Number 9, Jeff Kent. This hard-hitting second baseman was the National League's most valuable player in 2000 with the San Francisco Giants when he batted 334 with 33 home runs and 124 RBIs. Yes, he won the MVP award even with Barry Bonds as a teammate. Kent's best years came with the Giants. He also had good late career runs with the Houston Astros and Los Angeles Dodgers before retiring after 2008. Kent is a five-time All-Star and has four Silver Slugger awards. Kent began his career in 1992 with the Toronto Blue Jays before being traded to the New York Mets that same year for Dave Cohn. Kent had a good run with the Mets before being traded in 1996 to, you guessed it, the Cleveland Indians. The Tribe also got Jose Vizcaino in exchange for Alvaro Espinosa and Carlos Baerga. Kent only played in 39 games with Cleveland, hitting 265 with 3 homers and 16 RBIs. What the hell, Cleveland. But it gets better. Ken was traded after the 1996 season along with Vizcaino to the Giants for Matt Williams. The move was very unpopular at the time, but Giant fans have eaten their words since. Number 8, Brandon Phillips. One of Cincinnati's favorite players, Brandon Phillips is a red legend. He is entering his 11th season as 2016 gets underway. Phillips is a three-time All-Star and has four gold gloves at second base. Before his break, Phillips was an Indian during some rebuilding seasons. Phillips was part of arguably the best trade in Cleveland Indians history on June 27, 2002. The Indians traded Bartolo Colon, yes, the same guy that's somehow still around, aren't steroids amazing kids, and Tim Drew to the Montreal Expos for Phillips, Lee Stevens, and two players to be named later. Hmm, I can't think of them for some reason. It could have been anything special. Phillips played in only 11 games that season, but got a chance in 2003. He failed, though, pretty miserably. Phillips hit a measly 2-0-8 with 6 home runs and 33 RBIs in his rookie campaign. He then played in only 12, counted, 12 games total from 2004 to 2005. Frustrations kept growing, so what did the Indians do? Trade him in 2006 to the Reds for Jeff freaking Stevens. Never heard of him? Well, he has a career winning percentage of 1,000. That's right, he's 1-0 in 33 career games, all with the Chicago Cubs. Alright, Cleveland. Number 7, Dave Winfield. Any baseball fan definitely remembers this Hall of Fame member, whether it's as a Padre or as a New York Yankee. He also has memorable moments with the California Angels, Blue Jays, and Minnesota Twins. He is successful wherever he goes. Well, <coughs> <coughs> almost anywhere. The 12 time All Star, 6 time Silver Slugger Award, 7 time Gold Glove Award winner, has 465 career home runs and 3,110 career hits. He is so good that he was traded from the Twins during the 1994 strike to the Indians for a player to be named later. Instead of a player, the Twins just had their dinner tab paid for. What? You heard me right. The trade was executed at a dinner, and the Indians paid for the meal. Then the Twins said, okay, you're gonna have the oldest player in the game right now? 
Winfield then became a free agent but re-signed with the Tribe before the 1995 campaign. Hooray Cleveland! Boo Cleveland! Winfield struggled with a rotator cuff injury for most of the season. He only played in 41 games, hitting 191 with 2 homers and 4 RBIs. He didn't even participate during the Tribe's postseason run. How is he NOT wearing a tripod in Cooperstown, I ask? Number 6. Dennis Eckersley. Damn you, Rick Manning. Damn you. Our second straight Hall of Fame entry, Dennis Eckersley played in 24 seasons beginning with the Indians in 1975 and ending with the Boston Red Sox in 1998. Eckersley has a lifetime 350 earned run average with 197 wins and 390 saves. He is a six-time All-Star, the 92 American League Young Award winner, a member of the Red Sox Hall of Fame, has his number 43 retired by the Oakland Athletics, and damn you, Rick! Eckersley spent the first three seasons of his incredible career with Cleveland. Just a starter at the time, he is 40 and 32 with a 323 earned run average with the Tribe. He threw a no-hitter against the Angels on May 30th, 1977. His best friend, however, was Rick Manning. In 1978, it has been said the Indians became aware that ex-wife, the Dees, was having an affair with Rick Manning. The facts are not 100% correct, but the niece and Rick were later married. So, what's the best solution? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Eckersley was traded to the Red Sox in 1978 along with Fred Kendall for Rick Weiss, Mike Paxton, Bo Diaz, and Ted Cox. Ever heard of him? Me neither. That's when Eckersley really began his Hall of Fame career while we're stuck with Rick Manning trying to teach Matt Underwood how to call a bloody baseball game. Damn you, Rick Manning. Damn you. Number 5, Sam Rice. Okay, okay, I get it. This is the most unrecognizable name on the list, but hear me out. Sam Rice is in the Hall of Fame after a solid 20 seasons in the majors, beginning in 1915, the first 19 with the Washington Senators. He has 2,987 career hits, won the World Series in 1924, led the American League in stole bases in 1920 with 63, and finished fourth in MVP voting in 1926. His final year occurred in 1934 with the Cleveland Indians at age 43. He played in 97 games, hit 293, his lowest career batting average for a single season, that's how good he was, and recorded 98 hits. Walter Johnson talked to Rice about returning in 1935, but refused. In an interview conducted later on, Rice said he was unaware of how many career hits he had. If Rice was aware that he was only 13 hits shy of 3,000, would he come back? If you were aware that you were 13 hits shy of 3,000, would you return? Playing in Cleveland does that to some people. Number 4, Ralph Kiner. This Hall of Fame member is a Pittsburgh Pirates legend. Kiner began in 1946 and led the league with 23 home runs. He then led the league in that category for the next six consecutive seasons the most being 54 in 1949. He also led with 127 RBIs that season. The six-time All-Star has 396 career home runs, 1,015 RBIs, 1,011 walks, and a 279 career batting average. He was traded to the Chicago Cubs in 1953, staying there for 54, and then joined the Indians in 1955. He played in 113 games, hit 243 with 18 homers and 54 RBIs. A lingering back problem ended his career after the 55 season and only played 10 total seasons. Kiner later became a famous broadcaster for the New York Mets before passing away on February 6, 2014 at age 91. What could he have done with 10 more seasons? Cleveland does that to some people. Number 3, Roger Maris. It was on April 16, 1957 when Roger Maris made his MLB debut and it was with the Indians. You know, the same guy that broke Babe Ruth's single season home run record with 61 in 1961 and sent shockwaves across the country? Good thinking, Cleveland. Maris has 23 career home runs and 78 RBIs for the drive. He was traded in 1958 along with Dick Tomanek and Preston Ward to the Kansas City Athletics for Vic Power and Woody Held. He was then traded again in December 1959 to the New York Yankees in a seven-player deal. Maris won the MVP award in his first two seasons with the Yankees. In 1961, he batted 269 with 61 homers and 141 RBIs. He is a four-time All-Star and a Gold Glove winning outfielder. At least the Indians got a big power out of it. I mean, what a name! And he had 34 home runs with the Tribe in four years. That's, you know, more than halfway to 61. Number 2, Cy Young. You know that award given to the best MLB pitchers in each league every season? It's named after this guy, and he spent the majority of his career in Cleveland. He's not an Indian, technically, because Cleveland had different names during the times. I'll explain later. Young began his career in 1890 with the Cleveland Spiders. In fact, during his debut on August 6, he pitched a three-hit shutout. 
During his years in Cleveland, here was his win totals per season. 9, 27, 36, 34, 26, 35, 28, 21, and 25. Prior to the 1899 season, Frank Robeson, the Spiders owner, bought the St. Louis Browns, not to be confused with Cleveland, thus owning two clubs simultaneously. The Browns were renamed the Perfectos because it sounded so damn cool and restocked with Cleveland talent. Just weeks before the season opener, most of the better Spiders players were transferred to St. Louis, including Cy Young. The experiment failed for both franchises and Young went to Boston in 1901. The Boston Americans, mind you. It wasn't the Red Sox until 1908. In 1909, Young was later traded to the Cleveland Naps. He won his 500th career game on July 19, 1910 with Cleveland. He later finished his career with the Boston Rustlers in 1911. He ranks first all-time with 511 career wins, 815 games started, and 749 complete games. And he was born on March 29th. Hooray, Cy Young! Number 1, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Most fans will recognize this name from D.B. Sweeney's character in 8 Men Out or Ray Liotta in Field of Dreams. In baseball reality, Shoeless Joe Jackson was one of the game's greatest players. His best years were in Cleveland. Jackson began his career with the Philadelphia Athletics in 1908. He only played 10 career games there and was traded to the Cleveland Naps in 1910. Jackson finally got his shot in 1911 and flourished, before being traded to the Chicago White Sox in August 1915 because that's what Cleveland does, rips your heart out of your chest in so many different freaking ways. Jackson has a career 375 batting average in Cleveland with 937 hits, 353 RBIs, and 89 triples. That's almost 15 triples per season for crying out loud. Jackson's career, however, will be linked to the 1919 Black Sox scandal for the rest of eternity. After Chicago lost the 1919 World Series to the Cincinnati Reds, eight players, including Jackson, were accused of throwing the series. In 1921, Jackson and the other seven men were acquitted by Chicago jury. Nevertheless, the newly appointed commissioner of baseball at the time imposed a lifetime ban on all eight players. So that's my list. Are there any you knew played in Cleveland? Are there any that I missed? Tell me about in the comments section and don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and jack up the rev.